Let's talk about some benzene. A lot of people think that I'm polluting the environment with benzene with my plastic into fuel reactor. Well, first of all, pyrolysis is a completely closed, controlled system. I can completely choose what I want to emit, what I want to capture. I personally capture every single one of my products. I don't emit anything or leach anything into the environment. Number two, benzene is in crude oil naturally. We turn crude oil into gasoline with low benzene in it. Therefore, there are already processes that exist in this world to deal with benzene in crude oil or fuel. So we can do the same thing with the plastic, i.e. catalytic distillation is one of many ways to get rid of benzene, which is what I'm going to be implementing when I have the proper tools to test my products. Another thing about benzene is that, yes, it is carcinogenic. So are all fuels of this world. They're meant for engines to drink, not for you to drink or eat. But benzene also has value to it. It actually can be sold. One of the products you can make with benzene is benzoic acid, for example. So not only can we deal with the benzene problem or any other problem, but we can actually make value out of it as well. People all the time want to tell me, what's the point of your machine that turns plastic waste into fuel and gives plastic actual monetary value to be recycled and for us to clean the ocean if we're going all electric anyway? Well, guess what? Where does electricity come from? power plants. Where do these power plants run off of? Fossil fuels. So even if every single truck and car went electric, we don't have enough electricity even with the fossil fuel power plants to sustain the whole grid going electric, let alone from any type of solar or wind. So guess what? We still would have to use fossil fuels to run these power plants to generate the electricity to run your Tesla. And I'm saying we might as well just run those off of plastic natural gas plastiline, plastidiesel, or plastic kerosene. Now, on top of that, we have to also remember there should be a freedom. Not everybody wants an electric car. There's a certain feel and sound that comes from gas engines. Think about how powerful and how much engineering goes into engines. Some people just like that. And guess what? Now with this, we can actually have a renewable form of energy that's also clean the environment to put into these engines. These type of comments are actually true and do have some validity. The process of turning plastic into fuel is not something I've created or found out about. It's merely something that I've innovated to become more efficient and I'm on a mission to share with the whole world that it can be done. Ultimately, publicity is the best possible protection. It's not so easy to disappear if you do have a, a huge public platform. And the truth of the matter is most people in the past who have created great things and have disappeared do not have very much of a public image. And that's why I tell you guys to share this to let everybody else know and ultimately you can be a part of the journey just as much and share the mission with people and be the mission and embody the mission by sharing it because ultimately beyond anything else we want the whole world to know that this is possible to turn plastics into fuel and that there's no reason why we should have ocean plastics in our world because the process of pyrolysis has been around for so long and it's not been taught to the public but it should be so that's the ultimate goal and that's the best protection and that's the best security so ultimately if you want one of the most common and completely erroneous statements made about this process of turning plastics into fuel with microwaves is that we're going to be releasing tons of microplastics in the air when we burn this fuel. Let me tell you why that statement is absolutely wrong and not right in any reality. The process of pyrolysis is when you thermally degrade an organic material in the absence of oxygen to derive and attain the natural fuel products from it. In order to do that, it needs to be absolutely and chemically broken apart. So it is not physically or chemically possible for there to be microplastics in the fuels that this machine creates because in order for it to make the fuels, those byproducts, they come from the plastic being absolutely destroyed destroyed on a chemical level. Literally, the hydrocarbon atomic chains are being split apart to form the fuels. Microplastics cannot exist if that happens. So that is why the statement and the belief, and to be ossified in the belief that we're causing microplastic pollution is absolutely erroneous because we are not creating microplastics. We are absolutely destroying microplastics scientific literature that proves that plastic when left in the natural environments like the ocean and landfills under photo degradation actually releases methane and ethylene. Now methane is 40 times worse than CO2 and ethylene is 25 times worse than CO2. So through the process of pyrolysis which is carbon neutral it is literally actually better for us to turn all this huge bajillion gargantuan mass of plastic in the ocean all into gasoline and energy and burn that and release that CO2 instead of allowing this huge amount to stay the ocean, continue to emit way worse greenhouse gases, destroy our, our marine biology, reduce bacteria and algae life in the oceans, destroy all of the animals and birds on the coasts, 
while at the same time being an eyesore. So this technology actually is better for the environment. And on top of that, we get to turn this plastic into something that we can actually truly use to run our world. There's enough oil in the oceans to run the whole world for 30 years. So we're gonna have to import as much oil. We're gonna have to have as much logistics when it comes to oil. So yes, this actually is better. This is a pretty common type of critique I get. And trust me guys, listen, we live in a world full of clout chasers, scammers, and grifters. So you shouldn't believe anything that you see right online just because somebody said it. So I actually commend you for not just going out and immediately believing me just because you saw my videos. However, I will say this, right? This type of comment is a double entendre because you're saying I'm a scam because this is something that's already been done in science. But listen, if it's already been done and it's not pseudoscience, it's absolutely proven, it's real technology, it's not some type of fake thing, it's not a grift or a scam, then how can I be a scam if I'm suggesting to people that we can turn plastics into fuel and the only reason we haven't done it at a big scale is because it has not been monetarily or energetically profitable, but I'm hypothesizing that through the use of a continuous microwave pyrolysis reactor at an industrial scale, it will be profitable monetarily and energetically. Think about it like this. We don't call Toyota a scam because they're saying that their hydrogen engine is the best hydrogen engine. They didn't invent it. However, they're making it better. And think about that, that like this. I didn't make pyrolysis, but I'm making it better. I'm innovating it to get it to a point where it can be done right. So therefore, that's my hypothesis and that's my theory. And that's all I have to say guys asked for it you want to ask super scientific questions we'll get super scientific answers now this is a direct research paper scientific research paper off of science direct science of the total environments volume 886 it was found that ppo which is plastic pyrolysis oil or what we call plastic diesel had lower emissions in co2 when compared to regular diesel had lower carbon monoxide emissions when compared to regular diesel had lower smoke emissions when it com when compared to regular diesel and when mixed with certain alcohols it had lower smoke opacity now it did have higher NOx emissions or nitrous oxide emissions however with an exhaust recirculating system it was found that those NOx emissions went down and also when mixed with certain alcohols it was found that those emissions went down even in real diesel that we use in this real world to this day we have to mix it with diesel exhaust fluid to decrease emissions so what I'm telling you guys is that we can actually find ways and continue to expand in this subject and find things to mix with these plastic pyrolysis oils to reduce emissions. Emissions are a serious topic and in the past few decades in our world we have got to the point where we have become more conscious that if you do burn something there are effects of that and these emissions do really form but when it comes to turning plastics into fuel let me tell you why microwave pyrolysis is not as bad as you may think. Listen, plastic comes from crude oil. Plastic is the solid form of crude oil so therefore there's nothing in plastic that isn't actually in crude oil right other than some certain additives right therefore if we turn this plastic into fuel right and we can distill it we can actually use the same catalytic reformers the same cat crackers the same filters the same hydrothermal processes that we use to take the toxic components out of crude oil to take this out of the plastic plastiline, plastic plastic diesel, and the plastic plastic kerosene, therefore making it pretty much the same emissions and EPA approved emissions when you burn it through a modern engine that goes through a modern catalytic converter. So I'm not saying it has no emissions, but I'm saying it's not as bad as you think it is at the end. I turn plastic waste into fuel. Am I at risk of the government? No. I am an amazing mental health, have nothing but gratitude for all of life and for the work I do. The process of pyrolysis is not something I invented. Turning plastic waste into fuel has been around forever. So it's no threat to the government. The threat is when you change the mindset and the paradigm of the system. And the truth is we've been conditioned that in order to do things, you need to have government backing, certification degree backing, labs, all this stuff. And I'm doing it in my backyard with none of that, a very young age. And that does shift and change the mindset, pushing something opposite of what has been pushed. You're pushing self-sufficiency. You're pushing not just conforming to what you're told, being a free thinker, deeper things that go much deeper than just turning plastic into fuel. There's no point in being in fear. That's only slowing things down. Continue to do what I do. And most importantly, inspire people. That's all that matters because ideas are bulletproof.